The fourth is Thomas 4, 7, and 8. Okay? As you know, very important chapters in the building code. Um, so important that they actually allow you to bring copies of Rule 7 and 8 on the second day. That's how important these two chapters are. Okay? A third is Rule 7. Rule 7 is about occupancies, cells, and requirements. Um, let's talk about this super basic concept, you know, fundamental concept, the you know, difference from occupancy and zoning because some people get confused. Uh, the difference is simple. Uh, for snapping occupancy, we're talking about building use. For snapping zoning, we're talking about land use. Okay, by you bring zoning, for snapping yung you look by Stafford is residential, that's one thing. For snapping yung building is used as residential, that's another thing. Mamakaiba mo pinag-usapan yung land use sa high building use. I will also hope that you now do away with the misconception na Kasi ang common misconception is, laging exactly the same yung zoning sa building occupancy. Uh, some people assume this, na kapag, for example, yung lupa is a zone as residential, that 100% all buildings in that zone will be residential. This is not necessarily correct. This is not necessarily true. Um, I mean, the, the, the reason why we, we treat them separately, the reason there's zoning and, and occupancy and they're two separate things is, because they don't always match. If they're, if they're always the same, you use the lupa and you use the building are always the same. Then, but, from the lupa, because they always are the same. But no, we don't do that because they're not always the same. Yeah, that's why we talk about the buildings um, separately. Uh, you know, yeah, that's a common misconception. Now, for residential use of the lupa, it follows all buildings are residential. No. There's a trap saying the non residential buildings are non residential zone. Okay? Um, the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to look at the the table, pair of tables in room 7, a table of um, primary occupancies, allowed uses, accessory uses, and um, Under each zone, the a guy, a non allowed buildings per zone. So you see, for example, on the residential, he need a 100% residential baggage. Yung mga inaalaw doon na kanyang home office, kanyang kanyang small businesses, they think medyo inaalaw yan. Basta ang importante is, allowed siya doon sa residential zone. Okay? Allowed siya sa residential zone, you can build it. It doesn't have to match yung kanyang word na dapat residential yung lote, so residential din yung building. No, not necessarily. Ang importante is, kung nasa residential zone ka, the building that you're constructing is allowed in the residential zone. And not all of those buildings are strictly speaking houses. Okay? So you know, again, occupancy is building use, it's only is land use. We have ten occupancies in the building code. Okay, we have these ten. Uh, they're all each one is designated by a letter of the alphabet. Okay, A is residential buildings, B is residential hotels and apartments, C is educational and recreation, D is institutional, E is business and mercantile, F is industrial, G is storage and hazardous, H and I are both assembly. Uh, the only difference is H is assembly for less than a thousand occupants, and I and I is assembly for one thousand or more occupants, and then you have J accessory. So these are the ten building uses, the ten occupancy types in the building group. So only example then, the ten types. Um, this one, as you acronym, you have the approach. So meaning R stands for residential, C stands for commercial, GI is general institutional, I is industrial. UTS is utilities, transportation, and services. PRE, park structures, recreation, and entertainment. CUL is cultural. A is agricultural. AI is agro-industrial. And PUD is plant unit development. So, we say something that is human zoning. Um, due to the limited time, I would rather focus on zoning. Your occupancy, you can read this on your own, is really straightforward. Residential duty, by Residential development apartments, apartments, hotels. Education and recreation, these are school buildings. Um, this is very easy to study. Okay? Um, I'm going to ask you to study this on your own. Zoning is the one I'd rather spend time on because of the limited time. Now, Don, why am I choosing zoning over occupancy? Why would, why would I rather talk about this? Because for the exam, honestly, zoning is the one, is the one that matters more than the other, than the other thing. Most importantly, zoning than occupancy. Um, because well, first of all, in the exam, they ask more about zoning. And, but more importantly, 
Um, yung development controls na tinatawag, development controls, I hope that, that the term is familiar. Um, yung development controls, yung mga maximum building height, maximum footprint, maximum um, gross floor area or total gross floor area, maximum floor area ratio. Most of those things are zone independent. Okay? Your answer will depend. Say, example, your answer is the example. Okay, then the example. What's the maximum building height permitted for this project? Which, by the way, is a question that you will most likely get asked. Um, your answer will be to boil down to and about your zoning the project. Please check my description so I get them on R1 for that. Okay, so, I don't know, 10 meters or something. You know. So, again, my point is between the two, zoning is the thing that matters more usually in the exam. Uh, zoning is what determines a lot of the development controls. Most of the development control questions, the maximum height, maximum area, they depend on the zoning, not on the options. Which is why I would rather focus on this than occupancy. If I don't, don't make the mistake of not reading the occupancy, but I'm for it, just in case we're going to know about that. Yeah, I, how I wouldn't expect a lot of questions to, um, about occupancy. Uh, let's talk about zoning now. So, again, zoning is not used. In the zone, natin yung mga lupa, uh, according to different uses. Yung mga building na kata yung mga person dapat allowed in that zone. And dapat sumusunod ka sa limits ng mga zone. May mga limit ang zoning uh, as regards height, uh, when it comes to the area, setbacks, yan, ano rin yan. May mga requirement yan for zone. So, ano yung different zones? We said R is residential, but there are five residential zones. Okay, we have R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Let's just differentiate the five, the five residential zones. Uh, R1 is the low density residential zone. It's characterized by single family and single detached dwelling. So this is the least dense. Because it's not low density zone. Hindi sexy ka dapat yung buildings. Hindi masyadong mataas yung buildings. Um, yun. Hindi sila tikitikit. Hindi sila masyadong mataas. That's what low density means. So what do we expect to see here? Paling is about single family dwellings, single detached dwellings. When we say single family, one building, one family lap. So by as opposed to what? Men are multi family, like apartment buildings. So that's not what we expect to see here. We expect single family dwellings. And we expect it to be single detached. What does that mean? Indeed, naka attached say bound. Um, buildings, hindi na kasagad sa note, etc. Walang firewalls in other words. No, hindi siya, hindi duplex, hindi row house, walang firewall. Dapat single detached, meaning may set back on both sides. That's what we expect to see. Because why? Because this is so density. Okay? How about R2? R2 is medium density. So ito, we expect, medyo mas dense na. So meaning, medyo mas dikit-dikit na yung building, medyo mas matatas na yung building. Um, R2 is easier to understand when I show you the two subtypes of R2. We have a basic R2 zone, we have a maximum R2 zone. So, uh, the basic R2 zone, the, the most dense project that you can do is single attached or duplex houses. Because it's not single attached, this is the house that firewalls, and it's a firewall on one side. So, it's not a big deal, it's just a lock boundary on one side. Okay? But it's not duplex, it's not a big the low one lot is the same below your bahay on each lot, the fire wall on the same side. So, para mo kadi kiti la, mo para yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have illustrations, but you can imagine that saying na the low mo kaya bahay na kiti kiti la separated by fire walls, of course. So, yun duplex. Bottom line, allow the as a basic R2. Okay, hindi yun allow for one. There is a basic R2. Yes, we allow it. We don't allow for some three groups. Maximum R2 must dense yung allowable building dito, we now allow a multi-level residential building three to five floors high. This is much more dense because if you want to make it big and thing mga bahay dyan, patong patong pa sila, multi-level yan eh. So, this is always the more dense. Uh, we only allow this a maximum mark to go to the basic high. And five floors lang, bawal naman pas. Okay? R3 is high density. High density. Just like R2, there are basic R3 and maximum R3. Uh, the basic R3, we allow row houses, okay, which is but a more dense version of duplex. In duplex, the low buy mo ka dikit, diba? Row house, three houses or more dikit dikit. So, you do row houses. We allow this in basic R3, but not in R2, not in R1, okay? Ano naman yung maximum R3? Almost the same as maximum R2, the only difference is taller. 
Take away a maximum part of money, guys. Multi-level multi residential three to five stories high. Ito, six to twelve. So up to twelve stories, yung maximum. It's denser. It's high density. So, I love you. Part four is the auto. Well, it's described as a medium to high density residential zone. It's described as the townhouse zone. This is the zone for townhouses or buildings for you as multiple family dwellings. Uh, townhouses are houses, are, are houses to begin to get by a row house. Um, ang distinction ng building code between row house and townhouse is this. Pag sinabing townhouse, we're talking about structures on an individual lot, meaning isang lote, isang bahay. Nakasagad lang both sides. May firewalls on both sides, pero isang lote, isang bahay. Um, as opposed to row houses, which could be could be like this, but row houses could also be isang lote, multiple row houses in one lot. So that's that's a possibility for row houses. So it's a townhouse in the area because the holidays and the code by definition, townhouses are structures on an individual lot. So farm one is to one in Bahai and block. Okay. But the bottom line, part four is kind of the, the townhouse zone. The last residential zone is part five. Um I'm described as very high, very high density residential, uh, characterized by medium rise to high rise condominium. So it's the name of high rise residential up to eighteen floors. Now we'll talk about building heights later, pero 18 floors max on um, part 5. Now the other zones, the residential, the business that we want to call C1, uh, well C is commercial, sabi natin C is commercial. Um, that looks like the C zones, there are C1, C2, C3. Um, C1 is the light commercial zone. I don't shoot on a light commercial zone. Neighborhood to community in scale, so medyo hindi sobrang, hindi sobrang busy. I mean busy because it's commercial, pero hindi kasi intense ng C2 and C3. Uh, most of the buildings we expect to see in this zone are low rise. We only expect to see low intensity trade. So think of small shopping centers, the mga palengke palengke area, the mga ganyan, hindi masyado malaki, okay? Ang neighborhood lang, pang community lang, hindi yung pang buo city. Mga maliliit lang na, na parang neighborhood market. Yan yung mga we expect to see. Those are the uses we expect to see in this zone. C2 is medium commercial, so the scale is larger. Now, this is now commercial but city scale or municipal scale. So we expect buildings that are medium rise, three to five stories, uh, medium high density trade, and larger shopping centers are what we expect to see here. Okay? Uh, keep in mind, we're not describing the buildings, are we describing the zone? So uh, medium intensity commercial, yung C2. Okay? So yun, parang downtown area. Think of your downtown area of your city or of your town. C3, the last commercial zone is metropolitan commercial. It's the most dense the commercial zone. Uh, the scale is, it goes beyond the city, metropolitan and scale shop. Medium to high rise buildings, very high density trade. We expect to see very tall buildings, large to very large shopping malls, lots of people, lots of goods being delivered and sold uh, in a very busy, um, busy area, basically in C3. That's what we expect to see here. As for the rest, general institutional, obviously not institutional zone, so lands and as well as GI are going to be used for institutional uses, like schools, government buildings, and the like, public hospitals, all in I is industrial, we don't know about say I1 and I2. Our difference is from having I1 zone, we're talking about light industrial use, low rise buildings that are sprawling. Now, sprawling means malaking footprint, hindi mataas. Very, very broad new footprint, uh, although no density manufacturing. I do almost the same, I mean, medium now and low, medium industrial use, medium intensity manufacturing, and Mila Naguago is in height. Uh, we still expect this to be known as very slowly to be industrial. PTS uh, stands for utilities, transportation, and services. I think from the name it's obvious what this zone is about. Ito yung mga lupa na nakasong for. Utilities, the power generation, water distribution, water treatment, waste management, uh, dump site, transportation, uh, terminal, etc. All the other service areas. So we have been a part of the um, city or the municipality. We have to be able to do this. We have to be able to do this. Those are the use like this are the all the CPS. SPE is just a special zone. This is a generic zone. It could be used for any project that is not uh, covered by the others. No? Um, typically, special zones are created for cemeteries and memorial parks. But generally, 
a synaptic spectral zone, if you zone that's created for a purpose that's different from the other zones. But I mean, these are not the wrong zones, so that's a special zone for that. Okay. PRE marks recreational entertainment, so it is for recreational functions, no? uh, like parks, uh, parks and campuses, and other parks, public parks, that the premium of PRE. Cultural is cultural use, cultural zone, so mga lupa, nagagamitin for cultural uses. Okay. A is agricultural, uh, obviously, lands intended for agricultural use, so mga farmland, but not just farmland, nakalagay dito, even, um, for, even agricultural uh, blocks can be used for the construction of office buildings and other buildings for research and training, just agricultural research and training. Agro-industrial, the agro-industrial zone is almost the same. Um, same, almost the same as agricultural, the only difference is agro-industrial, so, so these are lands used for the agro-industry. Uh, but it could also be used to construct office buildings and facilities for agro-industrial education and research. And finally, PUD, uh, plan unit development, uh, ito yung mga project and a master plan, uh, they're usually classified as PUD, plan unit development. It's, it's intended for land development or redevelopment schemes for projects that have their own comprehensive development master plan. Now, mixed use project, uh, now, master plan community, um, townships, and all of those projects, no uh, The term for the zoning designation is PUD, Plan Unit Development. Okay, so let's now start with the remainder of Rule 7, Location and Property. Okay, let's start with a very basic requirement, the requirements for a right of way. Now this is a requirement from the building code. The building code says, no building may be constructed unless it adjoins or has direct access to a public space a yard or a street on at least one side. Um, this is about yung mga interior lot na tinatawag, yung mga lot na hindi nakadikit sa kalsada, bounded by neighbors on all sides. No? Um, kapag naman yung lot mo, we call that an interior lot, hindi siya nakadikit sa kalsada, like most lots. Um, you cannot construct a building on the lot hanggang hindi ka nakakapag-establish ng access mo to the street or to a public space, but most of the time, the public space naman is the street. Kailangan may daan ka towards the street. Yung daan na yun, dapat sa iyo. Hindi, hindi ka dadaan sa property ng iba. Dapat meron kang sarili mong daan. Okay? Kapag wala yan, then you can still own the property, but you cannot construct a building on it. Mm -hmm. Because the building code requires meron kang sarili ng right of way. What would most likely happen is you would have to purchase um, from your neighbor in front of you a small portion of their property para maging daanan niya. That's what's probably going to happen. But, yeah, that's the requirement. Next, use over windows. Ito naman is mostly about the, the roof line, okay? Um, you probably understand that the building code has setback requirements. Diba parang nila record ka dapat front setback of 4.5, side setback to meters for R1 within the requirements. Um, those setback uh, requirements are measured from the property line to the wall, to the exterior side of the wall. We don't measure this to the roof line. Okay, the roof line, it, it doesn't apply to the roof line. But that doesn't mean that your roof keeps small, but it will is the property line. And if you're thinking, well, the setback one is for the wall, then the roof can extend all the way to the property line. It's not a good question. You can't do that because of this requirement, uh, which again requires maintain a distance of at least 750 millimeters from the side in the rear property lines to the roof view. Okay, so again, um, 750 millimeters. No? And I would say, I would, I would point out that side and rear lawn in the Nagai, we're not having anything about the front, we're not having the requirements from property lines, um, side and rear lawn, yung sinabi. I'm going to talk about firewalls, uh, quickly defined firewalls, firewalls are fire proof barriers. Um, that prevent the spread of fire between buildings. We all know that. There's nothing new about that, nothing special. What's more important is the second part. Um, why are firewalls important and why are they discussed in details of building code? Because firewalls lower the open space in the phone. Now, the, 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 the moment you add firewall to your project, never was an open space in project, I say you know, space again that would have been set back in building. Kasi yung nag-firewall ka. So, that's why 
We have rules, we have limitations on firewall constructions. You cannot have too much, no matter on limit. Allow ka in many instances to have firewalls but not too much. They cannot be too tall, they cannot be too long. We're about to look at the rules now. So let's start. How much firewall can you build? This is an important um, thing. Because uh, I would expect kind of something on the other of us here. You should know because, uh, how much uh, firewall you're allowed to build. Um, it's the, the limitation is given per zone. We're going to go per zone. So we're going to have to do this one by one. So R1, we'll start with R1. Uh, it's actually easy. Uh, you cannot build firewalls in R1. Okay, if you remember, something I said, R1 Kanina was, what did we say? Low density, residential, um, single detached dwellings. Okay, so that's, that's really why you cannot build firewalls here. Because say, by definition, R1 should have single detached dwellings. In but it's not a single detached dwellings, it's a little bit So, yeah, firewalls are not allowed in R1. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. The thing went to Palito. This is not a firewall, but sometimes you may need a wall on the property line for your carport, for example. Sometimes you need to build a wall on the property line. But you can't build firewalls, so what can you do? This is what you can do. Okay, nakalagay dito, um, if you need a wall on the property line, say for your carport, you can build this wall. Um, this is fine. This is allowed for our one. Our rules down are the following. Number one, do not be taller than 3.2 meters, so that's the first requirement. Second, it cannot be solid concrete throughout the entire height. Okay? The bottom portion, the bottom 1.5 meter portion, should can be solid, but above that, it has to be made of perforated concrete blocks. Okay? And you'll see that above the 1.5 meter line, it's perforated, so that's correct. Now that's, that's how it's supposed to be. So again, is this a firewall? No, it's not. Um, but is it allowed in R1? Yes. Okay. In R1, this is part of the closest thing you'll get to a firewall. It's not quite a firewall, but it's, it's the best that you can build. You need a wall to property line. Next, how uh, about R2? Naman? Can you build firewalls? Yes. So R1 is not really a power. The rest can be. At the end of how much? How long? How about it? If R2 is only a property, you can have a firewall on one side of me, okay? Uh, it shouldn't exceed 80% of the length of the property line. So choose one side. When we say side, we mean either the left or the right side. No matter it's the front or the rear. Either the left or the right. Pili ka lang. Choose one. And don't occupy more than 80% of the site property line. For R3, you have two maximum configurations that are allowed. You have option A, option B. Um, for option A, two sides. For option B, side and rear. Let's look at two sides. Yeah. So you can open A, two sides, open B side in the rear. And in limits, if you choose option A, you can occupy 85% of each side. Now I think two sides got 85% of the property line per side. But make sure that the total length of both firewalls do not exceed 65% of the lock perimeter. When you add the two firewalls, their length shouldn't be greater than 65% of the lock perimeter. And they cannot be taller than two floors. If you go for option B, the option B, side and rear, 90% on the side, 90% on the rear. Now, the only time that you can do 100% is for the rear, and only if it's four meters long wide, four meters wide long or less. Okay? If it's more than that, then I'm sorry, you have to stick to 90%. But if you have four meters or less, when you move to the rear, 100% be firewall, but only then. Okay. Um, other rules, when you add the, all of the firewall, they shouldn't be longer than 50% of the lock perimeter. As for the height, two stories high for the side, 3.2 meters high for the rear. That's the maximum height. Bar four, um, bottom, um, well, yeah, two sides, basically. So R4. Uh, you can do firewalls on two sides, 85% um, per side. Total, when you add both, should not exceed 50% of the lock perimeter. The maximum height is three floors, not for R4. Last thing for R5, very similar to R3. There are two sides inside and rear, so we need option for R5. And it's about a combination of number. So it's so two sides option, option A, 75% per side, total should not exceed 50% of the lock perimeter, maximum height, three floors. If you go for side and rear, 
65% down upside, 15% down on rear. Total should not exceed 60% of the perimeter, 8 yards for the side maximum, 14 meters for the rear minimum. So that's our fight. Okay, so that's very detailed, no? Uh, but that's just for the residential zones. Paano kung non-residential yung project? For non-residential projects, ito yung rule. So, ano tayong detailed uh, rule for zone? Okay? Nakalagay na, for commercial, institutional, and industrial projects, you can build firewalls, but there are four conditions. Number one, your building must have a sprinkler system. Number two, you have to have fire retardant or fire suppression devices. Number three, the firewall, total firewall length cannot exceed 70% of the lock perimeter. And number four, you have to have setbacks from the road. What that means is you cannot have um, you cannot have firewalls on the road, which I think is obvious. I don't do that. But yeah, anyway, nakalagay naman yan. Pag road right of way, dapat may setback. Hindi pwede target. Okay? Is that how a lot of where is now? Uh, a new area that you can cover the building, a new maximum. Because obviously, we need it. Yeah, you need it for um as many as you want. No, there has to be a limit, and it has to be for um, not too much. So, I don't know, I need a limit. How do I find out the limit? Uh, well, first, we have to know. Uh, we have to name this quantity. I never thought about this part of total area in the building. Uh, there are two quantities, but most likely the more basic one is PGFA, total gross floor area. Pero pa kasi isa, GFA, we'll get to that later. Pero pa PGFA, total gross floor area, um, this pertains to the total floor area of the building, including services and parking. So I think of PGFA for now, I won't detail it too much, on, but for now, isipin mo lang, inaad mo lang ang floor area ng building. Okay, why are you doing this? Kasi you need to be sure na hindi ka na malagpas allowed. Kasi may limit ang PGFA. That's the idea. Uh, PGFA includes everything, including services and parking. Unlike GFA, we'll talk about GFA later, but I'll tell you now, for GFA, we don't include services and parking. Okay? But the bottom line, let's just think of PGFA as part of the total area of the building, total floor area of the building. Ang sabi natin, may limit dyan, and bawat ka lumagpas. Paano mo malalaman kung ano yung limit? Kasi kailangan alam mo yung limit para di ka nalagpas. So, uh, PGFA maximum is, it can be completed in different ways, but the most often used method is using the maximum PGFA table. Table 7.1 in Rule 7. Sorry, you can learn page number 12. Okay? Um, you're, we have different copies because so my page numbers might not be the same as yours. But I look for table 7.1 in the building code. You can show the table now. Yeah. Again, this table gives us the allowable maximum total gross floor area. We do not have any formula to compute for the PGFA max, is what we call that value. Make sure that when you design, you can manifest it. Okay. For example, um, 3 times 70%. You see, the opponent makes 70% of the lot, 70% of the total lot area, and multiply it by 3. That's the maximum PGFA allowed for the building. So make sure you can have a as you design. But how much other number of you didn't design? That's the idea of PGFA max. Now again, the limit, no, the PGFA max value, you get that from this table. But the value that you get will depend on three things. Now it depends on the lot type, the zoning, and the presence of fireballs. Okay. Um, meaning, what can I do for exam? What is the maximum allowable PGFA for project number six? Okay. Most likely, you go to table 7.1, you we'll go here to get the answer. Um, before you go to the table, though, you must find out Muna, and the way you must type the project number 6, and the way you zone in the project number 6, and firewall story in project number 6. Why do you need to know these things? Because the table requires conflicting information. What do I mean? If you look at the table, if I buy a good cup of interior lot, inside lot, corner lot, etc., etc., etc. So you have to know the lot type. You have to know the zoning. You buy a good some basic R2. This is a maximum R2. That's not a standard. You buy a good commercial zone in the box. And then, again, I cannot show you the entire table because I have the table. But if I buy a good cup of firewalls, it's a firewall. So, bottom line, before you can use the table, you must have the following um, information handy. You have to have the lot type, the zoning, whether or not. You have fireworks. But once you have those three, obviously it's just as simple as reading the table and getting the answer there. 
building height is another thing that is limited, that has limits, uh, for which the building code imposes limits. So, the question now is, how, how tall can the building be? That's a very basic uh, question in the exam. Um, you just get it from table 7.2, the building height is stable. And the nice thing about it is, it's much easier than PGLB Kalina because it only depends on one thing. It depends on zoning. It doesn't matter if I'm a firewall or not. It doesn't matter what I'm about time. What matters is that's our zone about. Okay? So this is that table, table 7.2, as you can see. For every zone, it is zone standard, right? Uh, we need to get now one in maximum height now. And the uh, height, the maximum height is given in two formats. So you know, if you want ilang floors yung manaw, nakalagay dito kung ilan. If you want ilang meters yung manaw, nakalagay din siya yung meters. So it's, it's convenient like that. So again, all that matters is ano yung zoning, and then you have the answer. So it's one of the easier questions, honestly. If you have to exam, the name of the height now, the name of the height now for this product, um, it's hard to go wrong because it's very really straightforward and money table. Okay. The more important question, I think, because in the day you say, you know, the maximum height now, the more important question is how do we even measure building height? Okay. For some people, it might seem like uh, a stupid question because what do you mean? When you say measuring building height, you measure it from the bottom onto the top, right? That's how you measure building height. And that's kind of true. Uh, the building code does say that when you measure building height, you measure it from the established grade line to the topmost portion of the building. However, on the main grade line and in the main topmost portion of the building, we have to define that with a specific definition of the building code. Uh, which we're about to talk about. We're about to define that now. But before I do that, uh, let's just quickly get this out of the way. When you measure building height, we do not include signages on top of the building. We do not include masks. We do not include antennas or chemical towers. These are, we call them allowable or allowed projections about the roof, but we don't consider them as part of the building and therefore they are not considered as part of the building height. Okay. Now, that's it. Let's go back. Finally, when we measure the building height, I mean, we start from the green line. We end at the top of the building. What is the grid line? How do you establish the grid line? The grid line, according to the building code, is the highest adjoining sidewalk. If you have a sidewalk, you can see the building. Or by the natural grid line, if you want. It's probably just a small difference between them. So that's the grid line, that's where you can get your measurement. It becomes a bit complicated when the lot is sloping. If the lot is not flat, which sidewalk do you take? Which grade line do you take? Do you measure it from the highest point of the lot or the lowest point or the, the midpoint or where? At the end rule. What you do, kapag sabi na yung lot is, you check mo ano yung height difference between the highest and the lowest points of the lot. Okay? The height difference between the highest and the lowest points of the lot. If the difference is 3 meters or less, then you start the measurement from the highest grade. If the difference is more than 3 meters, then you take the average of the two and you start the measurement there. I'll show you what we mean in their illustrations. These are illustrations from the building code. Where does the measurement begin? So we know that the measurement begins at the established grade line. But what is the established grade line? If the lot is flat, then it's simple. Either the sidewalk, the highest sidewalk, or the grade line, whichever. You know, there, there's probably a small difference between them. You can measure from either. Pero kapag sloping yung lot is like this. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take the highest and the lowest points, okay? Depending on the difference, the Mogobawi measurement, well, if the difference is 3 meters or less, then you start the measurement from the highest point. But if the difference is malaki, like more than 3 meters, you start from the midpoint. Midpoint of what? The very highest point, the very lowest point, this is the midpoint, this is where you begin the building height measurement. The average between the highest and the lowest points. Okay, so that's how you're supposed to begin the measurement. Next is how do you end the measurement? Where do you end it? Where is the top of the building? So we have to end it at the top, but what is the top of the building? For flat roof in building, then the flat roof is the rooftop. Uh, that's the top of the building. The top of the building is the rooftop. For flat, you know, like deck or whatever. But on sloping your roof, the top of the roof is the middle of the roof height. Hey. Okay, ito naman yun, pagkita ako sa drawing. Kung flat roof, then straightforward, it's up to the flat roof. 
Ang may pang ako may parapet for some reason, kasama daw dapat yung parapet. Pero kung sloping yung roof like this one, you don't measure it all the way to the apex, which is what a lot of people expect to do. You only measure it up to here, what is here. This is height of the roof divided by 2. That's where you end the measurement, that's the building height. That's where the building height measurement ends. Okay, so that's the rule. Um, a quick note on the towers, fires, and steeples. Ito yung mga towers, fires, steeples, this one. In the drawings kasi, you'll see na kalagay yung spire, tower, 6 meters max. I would just like to point out that 6 meter maximum height na yan is not always true. Kasi yung nakalagay sa text, uh, 6 meters maximum, yung limit, yes, if the tower or the spire is made of combustible materials. Pero kung hindi naman siya made of combustible, incombustible naman siya. Then there is no 6 meter limit. You can do whatever height you want. Uh, your only limit is your structural design. But whatever height that your structural design can support, um, you can actually do. Okay? So that's that. Okay, one last thing about building height limits. Sabi ko kanina, napakadali na building height limit. Pag tinanong ko kung itang, anong maximum height for the project, you just go to the table, you can't go wrong, etc. I said that. Um, this is the only possible complication. Okay, this is the only thing that could complicate your answer. Uh, and this is narrow proofs. Kapag makita yung daan, serving your property, FYI, may special height limits applicable to your property. Okay? Uh, this applies to properties served by roads 7 meters wide or less. Kapag ganun nakikin yung daan 7 meters or less, please be advised na meron, meron special height limits for you. Okay? Specifically, kung yung portada serving the property is only 6 to 7 meters wide, the maximum height of the building is 3 stories for 9 meters. No matter what the table says kanina, no matter what zone you're in, no matter what the original table says, Kung ganyan nakita dyan daan, don't go beyond 3 stories, okay? 45 meters lang yung daan, uh, yung tao at 2 and a half stories, or 7.5 meters. Last dito, 0 to 3 meters lang yung daan, 2 stories lang yan, don't go more than that, or 6 meters long. The only exception to this rule is the PUD zone, plan unit development. All other zones must follow this. So in the exam, most likely kasi tatarawin ko ito na gaysa dito. Um, kahit... I don't know if you can decide to know what you're going to do. What's the maximum height allowed for project number blank? Um, you have to know what the zoning is because the zoning is what will determine the height of the height of the limit. But you also have to study what you're going to do. How many roads are there? 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 Because if you have a lot of roads, you have to have a lot of roads. FYI, there are special limits. So which one do you follow? This? Or your table. Um, you check both and you follow the lower answer. You have the more strict answer, which would probably be this. It's a more special height limit, three, two and a half, and two stories. But check both, always follow the stricter requirement. In this case, the stricter requirement is you must follow. Okay, let's talk about parking. Okay, parking. Um, let's start with the pinaka basic. The part, the parking discussion, and that is, how much is the parking slot? Okay, here, yeah, so let me just write. As you can see, it mostly depends on the number of seconds you have to park. But sometimes it also depends on how many people have to park. In the case of the car, for example, uh, perpendicular if I use the dimensions of parking space, so parallel parking is the dimensions. So anyway, let's just read the numbers. Okay, kapag kache. Park perpendicularly 2.5 by 5. Kapag parallel naman 2.15 by 6. Minimum yan ha, feel free to, to increase. Kapag jeepney 3 by 9. Kapag standard drop or bus 3.6 by 12. Kapag articulated drop 3.6 by 18. Okay, we need to memorize this, yeah. This is a good question. This is a very easy question and you should get this right. Pag nagkamali ka dyan, I can assure you, konti lang kayo nagkamali. Okay, most of your classmates would get this correctly. Okay, tama ang sagot nila dyan. Ang dinigilin tanda lang. Yeah, I will say it after I wish you never rest. Itatanong ba yan? I don't know. Most likely na. I know. Kasi, I only say most likely na because they ask very few questions. I don't know if you've seen the syllabus or if you've asked around, but 
for example, today one morning, they probably would only ask you 100 to 120 questions. They can't ask you about everything, right? But the important thing is, if they do ask this, chances are not sure that, but sure correct answer that. Because if you have a this is one of the easy ones. So yes, if you're going to ask me, should I memorize this? Yes, absolutely you should. So anyway, this table tells you how big the parking space needs to be. All right. Next question. How many parking spaces should you have? That question is answered by a table. Table 7.4 is in row 7. Um, it's a complex table. It's very hard to memorize, and I'm not going to be able to show you everything because you have a table. I will give you a few examples. Okay. Um, example, you know parking spaces and that um, a computation though now is one parking slot for every three rooms. Now one parking slot for every three rooms if the hotel is in a highly urbanized location. Pero kung hindi naman highly urbanized yung location, pwede nang one parking space for every seven rooms, which is fewer, fewer parking spaces in Mahong Pomoja. Kasi hindi naman highly urbanized, okay now. On top of the car parking, which is the first two bullet points, car parking yet. Um, you have to have two tourist buses, two, two slots for two, uh, two tourist buses, and uh, one loading space for an articulated truck. So, on top of the car requirement, maybe not. This is the answer. Both of them good. Okay. Panama Church. Yeah, yeah. Every 50 square meters of congregation area, a computer on one car space for every 50 square meters, one city space for every 50 square meters. Panama Public University. Public, not private, but public. One car stop for every five classrooms, one loading space for two jeepney or shuttle stops, one school bus for every 200 students. Um, I'm not showing you these things because these are the important ones. Let's see, I can show you all this. I'm not showing you a few. But if you think that you are the most important thing, no. I don't want you to be different because I want you to see how different the combinations can be. Like one moment, we will not be able to see the rooms in the hotels. The next moment, I'm going to be the matter of square meters now. No? The next moment, but the bigger one is to jump in. So it, it really is different per, you know, per, per occupancy, if I buy a matter of hospital, I'm going to be the matter of long beds. No? So um, I'm just illustrating how different they are. Katanay to Mr. Exam, you know, part of spaces, it's a possible question. You, you just need to know where to go and where to find this. This is in row 7. That question is usually asked on day two. No, on day two, yeah. And on day two, remember, you have group seven with you. You have group seven with you. So, all you need to do is turn to the current page, find out the hospital project. Yeah, because I'm going to send you what I'm going to do. Okay, that would be the right number of bits. But anyway, um, that's how it is. Papaan na pang tinanong siya on day one. That's the scary possibility. On day one, you don't have group seven with you. Okay? Magkataroon ba sila nagbigyan sa day one? Kasi, hindi na magaling yung memories guys. I'm only showing you four, but it's a long list. Um, first of all, it's usually a day two question, no? But at the same time, if you look at the syllabus of the exam, strictly speaking, the building code is part of the day one syllabus as well. Okay. Um, i-memorize mo ba to because of that remote possibility na baka tanongin siya on day one? I don't know what you should do. Do what you think you need to do. Okay, it's your decision. I almost say I don't want you to do what I'm going to tell you. This is a demo. I say that because it's your better work on it. I would tell you what I would do if I were in your position. And what I did when I was in your position back in 2013. I was a bit scared of that possibility. But I knew at the same time that there was, there was no way I could memorize the parking requirements table. So what I did that was, um, I memorized a few. Okay, I was strategic about it. I, I can't remember what I chose. Maybe a uh, residential, the major pinagawa ko para na ko complete for commercial building niya. Maybe I memorized three or four um, computation methods. Um, ang inisip ko nang was if it comes down to it, okay, lang ako mahula on day one. Kasi nga nakalaw sila ng day one, wala akong rules at it. Medyo pwede kong gawing basis, yung counting na memorize ko, like siguro, may, may memorize ko to, one for that for every five classrooms. Uh, kung may ibang tanong na medyo similar, hindi man university or hindi man public, kanyari private university, you know, maybe I can use this as basis, para hindi siya mula o medyo may basis. Okay, so that's, that's a strategy that you can do. Kung talagang worried ka na bakit pangyari yan, should I mula na may sagot? 
um, we just want your guests to be parang as educated as possible. And making educated guests is because educated. We have to know something para meron pa mapagpubutan ng hula. Okay, parang hindi completely out of thin air kung baga yung hula. That's what we want to avoid. I always say that. Um, if you want to study a lot, para makagib mo yung questions, but also para matibedip mo yung more educated and more likely to be correct. Okay? If you're bitter about studying, you like to study, iba kasi parang may bitter na parang dami po yung nakakal, hindi naman ito lalabas. Pati na naman ito, tanong siya ako, most of the things hindi yan lalabas. You're correct. Most of the things that you're studying, hindi yan lalabas, simply because they only ask you a few questions, right? Um, but if it makes you feel any better, the more you study, the better you get at approximating the answer. Okay, you're going to do a better job at guessing the right answer compared to another student who did not study as well as you did. So, I don't know. Parang yun na yung consolation for you. Okay, you should continue to study. Okay? There's a good chance you didn't have The more you study, I'm telling you, the better you get at approximating the answer. Because the more you know, the, the more, parang the more things you can pull answers from. Anyway, so, so far we've talked about how big the parking spaces should be. They are. We've talked about how many parking spaces you have to have, so we can make them wear. Uh, next question. Do all of the parking spaces have to be on site? Because there are some sites that are small, like there is no space for a parking lot, but there is space for a parking building. How do you think that? They call it for the hundred parking spaces, but they cannot stay on site. Can they be off site? Yes. Nakalagay sa building ko. Let's start with this. I like to think of this as a discount um, clause. You know? um, if there is a multi-car parking garage close to your project, within 200 meters of your project, 20% of your parking requirement may be served by this garage. We have to learn that the meron kang kapit-bahay na multi-car parking garage. You don't own it, okay? It's just, katabi mo siya, or malapit siya sa building mo. Um, basically, what this is saying is, you get a 20% discount. Now, if the building code requires you to provide 100 parking spaces, now you only need to provide 80. What happened to the other 20? We consider that as served by the multi floor parking garage. But we, could, we, we, we assume that 20% of our customers get parked there. Does that mean you have to rent parking spaces there? We have to have 20 stops there? That's not the name No. We just expect that 20% of our customers can park there. Okay? This is a plain discount cost. You don't need to, to rent parking space there. It just the mere presence of this parking garage is enough reason for you to not have to go all the way. 80% the only dump Okay? Now, what if even with the discount in the Telega Pasha, like the you still can fit 80 slots. Can you is there any way we can still reduce your 80? Yes. Okay. Um, you can further reduce that if you have reserved parking spaces. This is the time that you would you would want to consider actually reserving the parking space is to further reduce it. So to further reduce it, you can actually reserve parking spaces for one one more car from 80, your requirement, but the right conditions. So if you reserve the parking spaces, that is important for your customers. They don't need to be on the other side of the but other conditions, the reserve slots must be in the parking building and not in a vacant lot, okay? And that's, the parking building shouldn't be too far away. Uh, the maximum distance is 100 meters in residential project and 200 meters in commercial project. Okay, so you yeah. uh, For redundant parking, let's talk about traffic generating buildings. I'll just go to this drawing. It's easier to explain with this drawing. What are we looking at? We're looking at the road intersection. Okay, Consalato, which is also a road, they intersect here. And this shaded square is a part of, oh, sorry, uh, what they call this, a traffic generating building. Think of a mall, no? Mall, traffic generating. Okay, so intersection, they might have the mall, and no problem. And the traffic model is intersection because of the customers going in and out of the mall. Okay, note it, we all understand that. I don't see the show, I'm not regarding the building code. Ito na naman ang hinihingi ng building code, it's really simple. Um, itong point na to, o itong point na to, ano ba yan? Ito yung point of entry and exit ng mga kotse, kaya pabunta pa lumas ng mall. 
So, dyan mapasok yung mga sasakyan mo. Yan lalabas. Ito rin yung same. Ayaw natin na masyado yung malapit sa intersection because honestly, it's not the building itself. That's the problem. It's these points. Eh. Yan ang nagiging choke point. Eh. Yan ang kapatraffic. So, what is the building called asking? Please maintain a minimum distance of 50 meters. This is a really short distance. 50 meters from the intersection to this point. Same here. From here to the intersection, 50 meters minimum. Okay, so that's the requirement. Yun lang. So it's not the building per se, it's really the the ingress and egress points for the for the customers of the mall or of the building. Okay, uh, we're nearing the end of group seven. There are some chapters about the dulo, FYI. Uh, minimum requirements for group A dual links. I don't know if you remember in group A dual links, but in group A is at the end of group seven. Um, that talks about group A dwellings. I don't know if you remember group A dwellings, but uh, when we talk about occupancies, there are you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, and J, I think, was a period. Uh, a, in that list, was residential. Most of the people who live in the Bahai are in the Bahai, basically, group A. Minimum requirements for the Bahai. It was a chapter of group A dwellings. Okay, so the requirements are sanitation, at least one toilet. Uh, provide the house with at least one toilet in adequate washing and daily facilities. Um, foundation of Bahai, make it at least 250 millimeters thick. Make sure that the uh, by at least 600 millimeters below the surface of the ground. Uh, the design loads, so for the structural design. Uh, minimum design load, like load on first floor, 200 kilograms per square. For the second floor, 150 kilograms per square minimum. Yeah. Wind load for the roof, minimum. 120 kilograms per square, and you have a minimum design load of what? Stairs, okay. minimum width 750, maximum riser 200, and minimum tread 200. Claimers of what? Nakalagay. Take note that these dimensions do not match the usual requirements for stairs in the roof flow. Meron minimum dimensions and riser, tread, width, imagine the maximum riser, minimum tread. They don't exactly match this, okay? Uh, to be more specific, a minimum thread required is row 12. Now, in general, it's a building code 250 that far, the minimum thread. It's a little step. So, para mga kapa ka na barriers, minimum yan usually is 250. Uh, pero dito na kalagay, sa group 8 dwellings, kya allow daw 200 lang. Okay? Um, I hope you know how to approach this in the exam, yung mga ganyan discrepancy. It's not really a discrepancy, it's just a noteworthy difference. But uh, I hope you know, what is the minimum thread required by the building code? And the default answer should be 250. Because that's the general requirement. The only answer 200. So, we have the question specifically. Now, building code group A dwellings. Okay. So, we have the group A dwellings. So, we have the 200. Because this is not the general rule. This is more of the. But the this is the exception rather than the rule. So as a rule, the uh, is general requirement of the 250 But specifically, the for group A, and now they want 200. So, you can say 200, but it's not group A. But if you want to say group A, default to 250, building code. No, but building code, you say by itself, 5 you will buy itself, maybe 20. But it's default to 250, so it's Okay, so now the being group A, but we want to it. Okay, entrance and exit. Uh, provide at least one entrance, another exit. So this implies the low to one for the house. Okay, this entrance is on exit. Um, I've gotten this lesson several times in the past. Um, if I'm to another the law, um, the word another implies that there's more than one door. So I would say two. This crash course is not a substitute to your um, studying the building code on your own in detail. You still have to do that. No summary like this will be enough. You have to study the IRR in detail.